Hello, welcome everyone to our webinar on uh, New Zealand's main uh, wine regions. Um, just before we get started, just to let you know, this session will be recorded and then will be available uh, to watch again on our WSET Events Hub and YouTube channel, uh, where you can also find uh, lots of our um, previous webinars to enjoy on demand as well. Um, we will be uh, sending out a short feedback survey at the end of this webinar as well, so you can get your feedback to help us shape our, our future events. And during uh, the presentation, please use the uh, QA box uh, to submit um, your questions, and I will do my best to answer all of these uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, before we start, really, um, just wanted to introduce myself. My name's uh, Ed. I'm a, a WSET a wine educator. Uh, WSET, of course, kind of uh, leading um, the way for wine, spirit and sake education. Um, so this presentation is in part of uh, New Zealand Wine Week as well in combination uh, and New Zealand um, Wine have a uh, presented a short video which I'm going to show at the start as it has some really beautiful shots of some of the regions uh, we are going to uh, look at today. So I'll just start that now. What if you wanted to make the most unique wine, something really special? Well, firstly, you find a verdant, fertile country with young, untainted soils. In a special occasion, so special that it has extraordinarily unblemished sunlight. Pure, fresh, clear water and just the right amount of hot and cold temperatures to grow fine, delicious grapes. Next, you make the wine. To make a unique wine, you need special people. People with a strong culture and connection to the land and a passion for sustainability. You need people with old world knowledge who are also innovative, dynamic and unhampered by tradition. And they'd be curious and bold. They wouldn't stop making one variety of wine. Oh no, they'd be up for making any variety of wine. Pinot, Sauvignon, Chardonnay and more. So who are these people and where does this wine come from? Well, some places have unblemished sunlight, fine soil, or beautiful water. Others have innovation, passion for the craft, or care for the land. But only one place has the purity of it all. New Zealand. It's altogether unique. What if you wanted to make... So, uh, apologies for that. All right, so um, where to start, really? A, a brief kind of overview, because uh, New Zealand, um, the wine industry as we know it today, is actually a relatively modern uh, thing. Um, although vines were planted in New Zealand over 200 years ago, um, it was quite a small um, uh, offering for a very long time. New Zealand in the previous century had a very strong kind of temperance movement. Um, and um, alcohol consumption was very, very low indeed. Uh, and there was almost prohibition, similar to what we saw in the United States, uh, very close uh, vote, uh, and uh, it was only narrowly beaten. Uh, otherwise, we would have seen uh, alcohol being banned across the country uh, 100 years after vines were first planted. Coupled with this kind of uh, anti-alcohol alcohol uh, mentality and a kind of beer drinking um, population. Um, it took a lot of immigrants from wine drinking nations, uh, especially um, parts of uh, what is now Croatia, uh, to kind of inject life into the wine industry uh, and bring innovation and, and, and techniques from, from Europe uh, and, and spread them throughout the country. Um, 1970s is really when the modern era of New Zealand wine um, kind of kicked off again uh, with a move to plant more high quality grape varieties that we'll be looking at today. And this, of course, mean, meant that the wines of New Zealand gained in popularity both domestically and, and abroad, uh, especially in uh, the UK, uh, the United States of America and Australia. And nowadays, New Zealand 
although only producing about 1% of the world's wine annually, is uh, one of a, the most talked about and, and popular kind of destinations for, for uh, wine um, in many parts of the world. So we're going to be looking at um, some really key grape varieties. Uh, there's uh, these grape varieties on screen, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay are the three most planted varieties um, in, in the country. Sauvignon Blanc, over 60% of all plantings. So by far and away, the most popular grape variety seen um, across New Zealand has almost become uh, a kind of name call uh, to, um, to people who love crisp, refreshing wines to go for a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Pinot Noir is our most planted black variety, about 13% of all plantings, and Chardonnay are our third, um, our second most planted um, white grape variety, and about 7% of all plantings. So our first grape variety, Sauvignon Blanc, what does it kind of taste like? Well, Sauvignon Blanc is a grape variety that is noted for having very high levels of acidity, making it that refreshing, crisp style that people are very fond of. It has lots of apple and citrus aromas, but it's also very aromatic. And we can see lots of floral aromas and these herbaceous aromas, so like green bell pepper uh, or tomato leaf are very prominent. And uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is noted for having really pronounced aromatics more so than in many other places where this grape variety uh, is is grown. Chardonnay I want to talk about as well at the same time our second most planted white grape variety. This will have kind of moderate to high levels of acidity, uh, lots of fruity aromas um, uh, in a typical high quality Chardonnay and many winemakers will age their Chardonnays in oak barrels um, in, in order to get uh, more complexity. And we'll see vanilla um, kind of sweet spice aromas being uh, added to our flavor kind of spectrum. So where will we find these kind of grape varieties being planted? Well, Sauvignon Blanc is our most planted grape variety. So it will be found in pretty much every single region inside uh, New Zealand but Marlborough is going to be our key area in the northern most parts of the South Island. Um, Marlborough also grows some fantastic Chardonnay. Hawke's Bay on the North Island, this is one of the few regions where Chardonnay actually outweighs uh, Sauvignon Blanc in terms of planting. Uh, so we'll be looking at these two uh, regions uh, first of all. So here's a beautiful shot. Uh, of, of Marlborough, uh, fantastic scenery across uh, New Zealand. Um, now, what makes Marlborough so special? Well, Marlborough, first of all, is the, the largest area under vine, and it really came to popularity in the 1970s and 1980s. And New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough really led that charge in gaining more popularity. Uh, Marlborough has some of the most uh, beautiful clear skies, uh, very little pollution across New Zealand and we get lots of long uninterrupted sunshine and now this sunshine is going to give us extra levels of ripeness and this ripeness is going to give us extra levels of flavour this is why New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough is some of the most aromatically intense you can find. Uh, we have a few kind of sub-regions that you might see in, um, in Marlborough so we have uh, Wairua uh, which is to the north of Marlborough, which gives us um, even more kind of sunshine uh, and uh, really pronounced uh, kind of fruity aromas. And we have our terre uh, in the south, which gives us uh, slightly cooler conditions. So we're going to see more herbaceous aromas there. And this gives us lots of opportunity to blend them together to get really complex Sauvignon Blancs. Uh, now, Marlborough is about 81% planted of Sauvignon Blanc, so it is really the, uh, the main uh, focus of this region, with um, Chardonnay a small offering, but getting a lot of attention for very high quality, around 3% of all plantings in, in this region. Hawke's Bay on the uh, North Island, another fantastic picture here uh, of the vineyards in, in autumn. Uh, this is the second largest wine region 
in all of New Zealand. Um, it is warmer as we're further to the north, which means we're getting closer slightly to the equator. Uh, so we're going to be warmer overall than the South Island. But we're also going to have some cooling influence from the ocean uh, nearby. And this helps moderate the hot summer daytime temperatures, giving us freshness in our uh, resulting wines. Um, but still that warmth is giving us the potential to ripen um, different varieties. Uh, this means that Chardonnay does particularly well here and it's the most planted grape variety. Our Chardonnays here typically of high quality. We'll see some um, flavours coming from oak maturation, maturation in barrels. Um, there is also a lot of Sauvignon Blanc being planted as well, typically being slightly fruitier uh, than the uh, Marlborough examples, slightly less of that kind of green bell pepper um, herbaceous aromas. Because of our extra levels of heat, um, we are able to, as I said, ripen more grape varieties in Hawke's Bay. And Hawke's Bay, even though um, the white grape varieties are the most planted, is getting a reputation for some robust full-bodied red wines um, from different grape varieties. And Merlot is our third most planted variety in Hawke's Bay. Uh, and is often blended with Cabernet Sauvignon to make some really fantastic premium quality red wines with more tannins uh, and, um, and, and structure and body. So those great varieties. Um, so Merlot is a, is a great variety that has lots of kind of red plum, strawberry type aromas, some black fruits as well. Uh, it often gets nice aromatics from maturation in oak, oak barrels. It has kind of medium levels of acidity and medium levels of tannin. This means it actually blends very well with that other grape variety I mentioned, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, which has very high levels of acidity and very high levels of tannins. So they, they pair very nicely, uh, softening the intensity of Cabernet Sauvignon uh, does Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon kind of boosts the tannin levels and the acidity uh, a little bit of Merlot as well. Cabernet has lots of black fruit flavors, it has also got lots of herbaceous aromas like green pale pepper uh, and herbal aromas. Uh, it often also will be a matured in oak barrels uh, to give extra layers of complexity to it. Um, and then these deep black currant aromas um, pair really nicely with the kind of strawberry red plummy fruit aromas that we'll find in our in our Merlot wines. So these are getting a lot of attention um, and a lot of praise for their super high quality um, that we're seeing from Hawke's Bay. This is, uh, these grape varieties, by the way, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon, these are very small amounts of plantings. Um, our most planted black grape varietal is going to be Pinot Noir. Now Pinot Noir, um, is a grape variety that doesn't have the same level of tannins as the previous. It has relatively low levels of tannins. Um, sometimes in certain regions in New Zealand, we can see those kind of creeping into kind of medium uh, levels. It is, however, very high in acidity, and this gives it a really refreshing characteristic. It also has very intense red fruit flavors, lots of cherries, plums, cranberries, strawberries, uh, many uh, many red fruits that you can find in a high quality Pinot Noir. Uh, high quality Pinot Noirs often benefit from oak maturation as well, similar to our other black grape varieties, to give us uh, just a little bit more um, uh, of these kind of vanilla spicy uh, aromas and, and a more complex uh, type of, um, of wine as well. Now Pinot Noir, our most planted black grape variety, uh, where are we going to find it? What regions does this grow very well in? Uh, so Marlborough um, is uh, our first place that we're going to talk about, um, our, our largest region in all of New Zealand. Um, it has about 9% uh, of its plantings dedicated to Pinot Noir, so more than Chardonnay, uh, although far less, of course, than Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, these are getting a lot of attention internationally uh, for having really nice, intense fruit flavours uh, and, and uh, real nice kind of complexity as well. Uh, there's one region that we haven't talked about yet, a much smaller region um, on the North Island, on the southern part of the North Island, 
Um, it's uh, a subregion of an area called Wairuarapa, um, and this subregion is called Martinborough. And this is now getting um, a lot of attention from from uh, wine um, lovers for producing Pinot Noirs that are really well structured with a little bit more tannins and very intense concentrated fruit aromas as well. So some really superb stuff here and uh, uh, one that I would recommend anyone to try and find some and enjoy. But the region I really want to talk about for Pinot Noir in New Zealand is to the south, this area called Central Otago. Um, this is a really extreme region uh, indeed. It's the most southerly wine growing region um, on, on earth, uh, closest to the South Pole uh, and the most further south obviously in New Zealand because of this. Um, and we're gonna see a really e extreme kind of, of weathers. It's surrounded by uh, mountains on pretty much all sides, giving it this really sheltered kind of uh, location, getting a little influence from the oceans that surround New Zealand. And this is gonna lead us to have extremes of both heat and cold. In fact, in central Otago, the highest recorded temperature in New Zealand has been recorded uh, and the lowest recorded temperature. And there's about 50 degrees difference between them. So from about uh, yeah, high 30s to almost minus 20. Um, so this is gonna give us some, uh, some unusual but some interesting growing conditions. We're gonna get very hot summers but we're also going to see a big difference between the daytime and the nighttime temperatures during these, uh, these summers. So we're gonna have very hot days and then very, very cold nights. And this is gonna give us really intense concentrated fruity aromas, but that cold nighttime temperature is gonna help us retain freshness uh, and, and, um, and, and kind of purity of that fruit flavor as well. Now, Central Otago is really a story about uh, Pinot Noir. Um, just over 80% of all plantings uh, in Central Otago are of this grape variety uh, and is absolutely fantastic stuff uh, indeed. Now, I would again recommend highly anyone who, uh, who is able to, to try uh, some Central Otago producers of Pinot Noir. Uh, unfortunately, because of the super high quality, it does mean that the price is often uh, relatively high, um, but I can assure you they are remaining still relatively good value for money as well, if you can afford them. So um, those are the three kind of main grape varieties and reasons um, I wanted to talk about today. Um, so. Thank you very much. Before we go over to questions, I would just like to say, remembering that this a webinar recording will be available very soon uh, on the uh, events hub. Uh, so make sure you check that out and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can keep up to date with all of our on-demand uh, events. Um, and to direct everyone who uh, wishes to sign up for any of our wine, spirits or sake uh, qualifications to, uh, visit our page at wsctglobal.com. Uh, 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 so with that said, let's uh, go and um, look at some of the questions. So um, Felipe, um, fantastic question here. What grape varietals does New Zealand consider to be their next steps? Do you see the proliferation of Albrino in the area? as a likely growth avenue from trade, uh, obvious ties to the crisp refreshing uh, approach. This is a fantastic question, yes. And um, obviously Sauvignon Blanc is going to remain the, uh, the largest kind of um, grape variety in terms of planting and demands and exports uh, in, in the near future for, for sure. Um, but uh, what we are seeing is a kind of move to see more uh, varieties being planted okay and that includes things like albrino which is usually found in the northwest of spain and is another great variety that has um some 
uh, some real high quality potential in New Zealand. Now, I will imagine that these grape varieties are going to see growth over time, but they're coming from a very small base. So we're seeing uh, far less than um, uh, 1% of all plantings in New Zealand being anything like Albrino. But with that being said, from this small growth, small area, sorry, small percentage, I will see uh, growth, I expect, in the in the next few years because of their um, their their kind of quality. Um, uh, any innovations in terms of cooperage materials, any woods well suited maturation outside traditional oaks uh, in um, in New Zealand, we will see uh, French oak typically being uh, imported. Um, uh, I I've not seen any producers using anything other than oak um, in, in their, their wines, but um, similar to your question about kind of alternate varietals, another way of seeing diversification of New Zealand's wine offering is innovation within already well-established styles. So we're seeing innovation in how New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is being produced uh, to give us um, different kind of characteristics. So we're seeing now some oak matured Sauvignon Blancs, which is not typical um, and can give us some interesting characteristics uh, and other methods in the wine making uh, that can lead to different nuances of flavor as well. Would I agree that Chardonnay is the most underrated white varietal in New Zealand from Paul? Uh, I I don't know if it's underrated. Um, some producers of, of Chardonnay from New Zealand have won some of the highest accolades across the world. Um, now, that being said, it's always going to be in the shadow of, um, of Sauvignon Blanc in New Zealand. Um, so uh, that might be what, what, what is, is not holding it back, but it is, is part of the reason uh, why it's not so reported on this. It's a tiny kind of percentage compared to our Sauvignon Blanc. Um, yeah, so check out producers like Khmer River in, in Auckland on the North Island, and they are some of the, the greatest Chardonnays that you can find. Okay. Um, do I have a producer you're particularly excited about this year? Um, wow, I just mentioned one. Uh, this is a, a, a producer I show often in my classes, Khmer River. Uh, they're, they're not uh, new to the game. They are been producing some of the highest quality Chardonnays uh, for, for decades, um, but it's one I keep going back to. Um, are New Zealand Pinot Noir wines comparable to Oregon? Now, the, the th they are both regions that produce uh, the, oh, the uh, sorry, Christian, the name of the producer, Kumea River, K-U-M-E-A-U. Um, New Zealand wines comparable to Oregon's, they're both super high quality regions. Um, I would say New Zealand Pinot Noir typically have more concentrated aromas. It's part of this um, unique kind of atmosphere that New Zealand has, this beautiful, clear skies with lots of intense sunshine um, uh, can give us some really ripe fruit. Um, so they are generally a little bit more intense. And similar to the question I see, um, Otago to Burgundy in California, just more intense fruity aromas as well, without being um, necessarily as, uh, as full bodied as some Californians, but more fresh and, and, um, uh, and, and interesting. Uh, what's the typical growing season in Central Targo? It, it, is, uh, it is short. Uh, it's, that's the lack of influence from the ocean means that we don't get a, a long growing season, but what we do get is lots of warmth during the short growing season. So uh, it is almost a bit of a gamble each year, but we're able to get just enough um, heat to ripen our fruit uh, and to ripen it very well indeed. Um, it is also a very dry region as well. Um, so uh, that can pose a challenge to uh, a lot of producers as well. Uh, what about other grape varieties in New Zealand? Yeah, so I, I covered obviously the um, um, 
the main three and and there are plenty of others as well um i also covered um, merlot and cabernet sauvignon um but there's things like riesling um that are um less than one percent of all plantings um syrah as well about one percent of all plantings these are getting a lot of attention even though they are from a very small um kind of percentage they are um getting a lot of attention for their their really high quality and as someone previously uh said um uh albrino um chenin blanc these new kind of varieties that we're seeing producers experiment with uh, could potentially be the next big thing as well are any grapes actually indigenous to new zealand no uh, there aren't any new zealand uh, own grape varieties um it's uh yeah or everything has been imported over the last 200 years from from uh, other other countries uh climate change is unfortunately going to affect uh, it's a question from Danielle uh, is going to affect um uh, all countries uh, and all regions in some way um it can mean that harvests are being brought back as grapes are ripening quicker um uh, it can also mean that grapes are starting to grow earlier in the year as well so if we're seeing a kind of shifting uh, time frames from what would be um, previously held as a kind of normal idea uh, for when we would grow and, and harvest our fruit. A uh, question from Roger, what about Auckland Wines, Khmer River? That is actually uh, the producer I just um, recommended. Uh, I had the Coddington um, single vineyard chardonnay from that producer uh, last week and it is sensational so auckland um is now actually quite a small region in terms of output each year um compared to the big three that we talked about marlborough uh, hawks bay and central otago um it is under uh yeah it's, it's kind of land prices are very high um it's quite wet being on the western side of the island it gets a lot more rainfall so it's slightly more challenging to grow grapes um, but it is one of the warmest areas as well so we can get some really ripe um, uh, fruit there uh, what unique soils you have in Hawke's Bay and what points for the wine um, New Zealand is a patchwork of many different soil types we have lots of rivers giving us um, kind of a patchwork uh, where they've deposited like clays and sands and and gravels and so on. Uh, Hawke's Bay is is no different, has a, a, a patchwork of, of either uh, water retaining soils or, or uh, quickly draining soils as well. As well. One of the um, best um, regions for the Merlot and the Cabernet Sauvignon I mentioned, uh, mentioned in um, Hawke's Bay. Uh, it's called Gimlet Gravels, a subregion, and these gravelly soils help um, uh, kind of retain the heat of the sun and, and um, uh, radiate it out uh, later in the day, helping give us more um, ripeness. Um, and uh, do vines need to be buried in central Otago to protect them from the cold? Um, yeah, we do get very cold in the winters. Um, the lowest recorded temperature is around minus 20 degrees Celsius. Um, so this isn't really, well, this is kind of nudging up towards the, the temperature range where winter freeze will be a big issue. We generally see it need to be a little bit colder than that before we'd have to start burying the vines. Um, but some producers may do this just uh, in case. Um, and then Donovan, uh, thank you for, my, uh, for your comments on my Maori place names, I apologize. Uh, profusely for my pronunciation. Um, so uh, yeah, please, please take that. Uh, I, I try my best. Um, soils are incredibly important in New Zealand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Gimlet gravels, great syrah. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic uh, stuff. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Donovan, really good points. Um, is it a good country to develop natural organic wines? Yeah, we are seeing a huge push for sustainability. New Zealand is is actually one of the countries leading um, uh, in 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 terms of sustainability. So we're seeing lots of of uh, producers being more kind of eco conscious, and we're seeing a lot more producers moving to organic viticulture. Um, 
can you highlight the typical flavor profiles of Pinot Noir from Central Targo versus uh, Marlborough um, now and then harvesting time as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to see this is quite a complex question because Central Otago itself has many different subregions, and we can see some of the subregions in Central Otago being harvested a month before other regions of Central Otago, uh, different kind of microclimates. So that's quite a, a complex one. We'll see similar in, in Marlborough, some regions uh, being cooler and have um, a harvesting of the Pinot Noir later. Generally, that being said, we have. Um, a generally more flavor intensity from Central Otago, more power, more tannins as well. So we're gonna see a fuller body. We can also see typically a little bit higher alcohol levels in a Central Otago uh, Pinot Noir than one from Marlborough, where they generally to, tend to be a little bit softer uh, and lower on the alcohol. But uh, that being said, different producers can produce many different styles of wine. Um, and we can see some really powerful Marlboros and some really delicate Central Otagos as well. Um, other than climatic influences for Central, what key hazards to note for Marlboro and Hawke's Bay? One of the biggest hazards actually is birds um, uh, wanting to eat fruit uh, and possums as well. So uh, a lot of animals, because uh, the quality of fruits in New Zealand is so high, also want to eat it. Uh, so um, it's important to kind of net your vines, getting ready uh, when the fruit is getting ripe, um, to to stop uh, the birds and and the mammals eating it. So that's that's a real key hazard uh, for for many areas of New Zealand. Um, other hazards would be we can get quite windy in a lot of places, being close to these coasts. Um, so this wind can kind of damage vines a little bit. Um, so one way is to, to protect against wind is to plant bushes and trees to act as windbreaks. The issue of that is the bushes and trees are then becoming nesting grounds for the birds that want to eat your fruit. So it's, it's a, there are a few <laughs> issues other than uh, some climatic ones as well. Uh, are the Chardonnays and Hawks Bay primarily oaked or unoaked? Um, primarily oaked, um, but we can see some unoaked examples as well. Uh, thoughts on the future of sparkling? Yeah, so New Zealand sparkling wine um, is a very small offering, uh, but it can be of a very high quality level. Um, there is intense competition in the sparkling wine market. So I think um, it's it, it could be it could be uh, something that if um, producers focused on, we could see more people uh, looking at but I would think that the strengths of New Zealand are generally going to be in the, the light wines, uh, the non-sparkling wines. So I've been to Pistate Semillon as a powerhouse grape in New Zealand in the future. Uh, Semillon quite often likes a little bit warmer, so maybe on the North Island, we could see some Semillon um, doing some fantastic work, um, but uh, yeah, I, I will never say never. Um, how to position position New Zealand Pinot Noir versus Burgundy style of, and huge culture on Pinot Noir uh, Burgundy? Well, uh, yeah, it's there is going to be a lot in common. Uh, the Pinot Noirs are both of a very high standard. Um, they are generally um, still very high in acidity and and fresh. They don't have any kind of cooked fruit aromas that you see from Pinot Noir in slightly warmer climates. Um, we are seeing now uh, with kind of subregions in in Marlborough, in places like Martinborough, um, in subregions in Central Otago, this kind of carving up um, of uh, some kind of different attributes that we see in our Pinot Noirs typically. So, watch the space. Maybe in in fifty years, we might have something similar to P, um, kind of Premier Cru and and, and Grand Cru as well. Uh, what oak is used? French, US, other typically French, um, typically French. Uh, are there multiple clones of Sauvignon Blanc? Uh, there are indeed. I'm, I'm not going to go into all of the different attributes we'll see in Sauvignon Blanc clones, um, 
but uh, that, that's for for a different webinar, I, I believe. Um, but they, yeah, there will be different clones that will have slightly different attributes, which might give them slightly different um, um, qualities in in the vineyard. Um, dessert wines in New Zealand. I just saw actually a pop up from from uh, someone saying, you know, the cloudy bay sticky. Um, yeah, that's a fantastic wine. I recently had uh, a sweet Riesling from um, from Felton Road in in central Otago, and it was absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. So, lots of late harvest uh, to to give us uh, some um, some some concentrated sugars in our grape varieties, um, and uh, yeah, this can lead us to having some really fantastic sweet wines. And then Macabo produced in New Zealand. I, I wouldn't put it past some producers. Um, I haven't heard of any yet, okay? But maybe that's one for the future. Maybe you can recommend it to some grape growers in New Zealand. Um, may I ask you a suggestion on grape growers for grape varieties you've spoken about? We don't get them here in Zimbabwe, so try and source ourselves. Any recommendations? Uh, uh, this question, I, I, honestly, I wouldn't know how you would be going about uh, importing. Um, uh, these great varieties um, to to Zimbabwe. Um, I, I, I unfortunately would not be able to help you with that question, uh, Kyla. But uh, good luck, um, and uh, and we'll hope to hope you uh, have good success. Um, two questions that are quite linked: uh, U.S. rootstocks, and do you have a phylloxera issue? Uh, phylloxera is in New Zealand, uh, so um, vines will be planted on uh, on U.S. rootstocks. Okay. I see more use of Cabernet Franc due to climate change. There is some Cabernet Franc being planted uh, that has been planted in, in different regions, most, mostly in the North Island, uh, where it's warmer and it's more successfully able to ripen. So some fantastic examples in, in Hawke's Bay. Um, what method of production in the winery are the wines aged before bottling? Uh, it depends on the grape variety um, with oaked expressions of Chardonnay. Um, Pinot Noir, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot, uh, they can see prolonged maturation in oak barrels. Um, some new kind of expressions of Sauvignon Blanc will see um, uh, some, some great uh, kind of qualities from having some maturation before bottling. Uh, the method of production in the winery, New Zealand is uh, a fantastic producer of wines. They are, um, yeah, some of the, the greatest kind of um, like levels, and this sounds really dark, but hygiene, and that's very important in the winery, super clean, super kind of meticulous, uh, like kind of approach to quality. And this, this kind of diligence, and this care can really see some, um, some, uh, some really pure and, and fresh styles. Um, average altitude of vineyards in New Zealand, Ireland and North. This is not a nation really where altitude is going to be playing um, a, a huge uh, role. Um, most vineyards close to the sea and close to sea level. OK. Um, uh, oak barrels answered, yeah, you're generally going to be French barrels. Does Pinot Gris have a big share of the white wine market, please? Yes, actually, in fact, Pinot Gris um, is one of the is the kind of fourth most planted grape variety, and we see a huge range of styles. Um, so we can see kind of dry to off dry, kind of more Pinot Grigio style, uh, light refreshing styles, and slightly more riper, um, uh, intense styles as well of Pinot Gris. Uh, what's the difference between wine characters between Australia and New Zealand? Can I say they're similar characteristics? Um, they are very different, actually. Um, so they are, um, yeah, Australia is generally going to be speaking much warmer in climate, and that's that's going to be a huge uh, impact on the um, on the on the styles of wine that are going to thrive there. Um, there are 15 unofficial subregions in the movement regarding making them official. Uh, yeah, this is something that we could very much easily see uh, in the future, seeing a movement to kind of see 
um, more subregions becoming kind of official. Um, so with a country that still has a relatively young um, a kind of wine industry, um, let's say the modern iteration of New Zealand wine being about 50 years old, uh, we're going to see it uh, evolve very much so in the next uh, next few decades. And, and I would not be surprised if we're going to see more of these um, subregions becoming more official uh, and more kind of, um, yeah, more kind of regulations on, on these things as well. Um, does the New Zealand government have incentives for export and programs for education and cultural exchange wines? Uh, wines for Spain etc yeah absolutely so um, I, I would get in contact with Wines of New Zealand uh, that's the kind of body that you should go to to help introduce the region and and hopefully give you so um, um, some uh, some things um, now uh, I really appreciate lots and lots of questions um, but we're going to have to wrap it up very quickly so um, uh, so, uh, last question, uh, any Italian varietals grown or considered? Um, watch this space. Uh, I mean, Pinot Grigio is, is, uh, is, is, or Pinot Gris is one of the most planted grape varieties, but we could absolutely start seeing some, um, some new varietals being, uh, planted and that would be great. Um, so. Again, sorry if I didn't, ab I wasn't able to answer all your questions. It's been uh, fantastic to, to talk to all of you. Uh, some fantastic uh, questions indeed. And um, I wish you all a pleasant rest of your day. Uh, and thank you very much. <laughs>